Guru Channel. It is January 14th, 2017. Once again, the sun disturbance continues as we're watching a very, very large coronal hole turning towards Earth in the next several days. The reason why I report on these coronal holes is because they are very suspect when it comes to increasing the earthquake activity on the Earth. Now, to me, and in my research and what I've been doing with my investigations, is there seems to be something perturbing the sun. Something is interacting with our sun, and it has been for some time now. Now, we're going to go ahead and get straight into some of this information, but before we do, I want to go ahead and announce to any of our viewers and subscribers that we are now on Facebook. We've dedicated a whole entire page to Planet X and all of the current events and things that are happening with our Earth and the Sun. I will leave a link to the new Facebook page in the description box under this video. But let's get right into taking a look at this large coronal hole. Now, if you take a look at the very top of the Sun, all through this very, very dark region, and then curving downward, it almost is in the shape of a banana, this large coronal hole. Now, just the other day, the sun had a very large coronal mass ejection. And we're going to go ahead and show that to you because we have it. And it was quite amazing. Now, one space weather uh, website said that this CME, as they call it, coronal mass ejection, was almost a kill shot for the Earth. Meaning, at the time of that coronal mass ejection, if that would have been aligned with the Earth, that is what they reference to when they say that would have been a kill shot. So that would have probably been pretty close to the end of humanity. And we always seem to be in the right place at the right time during these large CMEs. But there you go. You can see that this, this coronal hole, and this is just another image of it, it will be turning towards Earth within a matter of days. And just a few weeks ago, we were going through this over and over and over again, these large coronal holes turning towards Earth. And everyone says, well, what does that have to do with us on Earth? What is the big deal? Well, past research has shown that these coronal holes, when they align with Earth, they create all kinds of problems on Earth, and they're directly now... Uh, there, well, basically what I'm saying is when we have these coronal holes turning towards Earth, it increases the earthquake activity, just basically in layman's terms. Not getting very scientific with you, but the solar wind and all of the particles that are just blasting out of the sun. And I'm going to show you a short video that shows this. It's amazing to see it happen. But if you live in these earthquake zones, it's not amazing when the Earth is shaking under your feet. And if, you, if you're able to keep track of space weather and you happen to live in an earthquake zone, well, you can catch a pretty good idea of what might happen. So before we get into all of that, we're going to check on a few other things. Now, whenever these coronal holes are spewing this massive amount of solar wind, we are getting hit with radiation. And this diagram right here, this is showing you, and this is all up to date, pretty close up to date. Sometimes there's a little lag a day or two behind in the data. But this is showing you the Earth, the dark side and the illuminated side, illuminated by the sun. The dotted line surrounding the Earth here is, is basically where our satellites orbit around the Earth, kind of like a safe zone. But as you can see, this is all radiation and we're going to go ahead and speed that up a little bit and you can see the radiation will come in and it is enveloping the entire earth now this is actually updating as we speak and this will start to play now this is our magnetopause and this is what protects the earth from a lot of this solar radiation and from time to time, there are issues 
with our magnetosphere and our magnetospause. But we're not going to get into a whole bunch of that. But what I want to show you is that this radiation is making its way into the Earth. So I will include links for this. And if you want to start to monitor this and start to learn about it, I'll supply you with the links. Um, one very good website to go to is BP Earthwatch. Now, I'm not talking about the YouTube channel. BP Earthwatch has a fantastic website that gives you links to all of this information. And you can click on it and you can start to learn and see for yourself what is happening to our sun and what is happening to our planet. And we're not, we're not given the reasons for all of this. It just seems this whole entire year, everything that has happened, we're just not given the information. Oh, big deal, there's an earthquake. Oh, big deal, there is a sunspot. Big deal, there's a coronal hole. But no explanations on why all of a sudden all of this is happening. And I keep saying to people, think back. In your lifetime, have you ever seen anything like this occurring? Absolutely not. So we're going to go ahead and move directly into, let me just exit out of there. We're going to move into this coronal mass ejection. And this is going to show you this ejection. Now, if you look up here at the top, this will show you the planets and several satellites that are moving through space. Here you have the sun directly in the middle. The yellow sphere that I'm circling right here is Earth. Now, watch very carefully. You'll see the coronal mass ejection come directly from the sun. And the Earth was right about here. So that's what they were referring to when they said, we just missed a kill shot from this coronal mass ejection. The Earth just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I've seen a lot of this, you know, over the years and, you know, watching the sun. And it just seems that the Earth just continuously gets lucky when it comes to these kill shots. So once again, we were lucky. We were pretty far away from it, but it was quite a spectacle to, to see this. Now, I have the, the SOHO uh, satellite that, that uh, looks directly at the sun. And I'm going to go ahead and play this for you because we're going to see that massive CME, coronal mass ejection, coming out of the sun. So I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll start this for you. And you could start and stop this um, as you want. And we're going to go ahead and speed it up a little faster. And bingo, there we go. So we're going to stop it. I'll reverse it. And you could just see how massive this was. Now, I'll leave a link to this also. And you can go on here and you could put in the dates. And it's quite easy to use, quite easy to learn. And you can check these things out for yourself. Now, one thing that I might add, whenever you're looking at the SOHO uh, space telescope, looking at the sun, quite often you are going to see many, many other objects just streaming past the sun. Now, some of you may laugh about this and some of you may not, but over the years, and I watch the SOHO and LASCO all the time, you may see a UFO or some types of objects that are just completely unexplainable. And how you do that is you just take a small, uh, a small section of dates just say, for instance, uh, maybe a, a two-day period from January 11th through the 13th. Plug the dates in and hit play, and it will give you those dates. Now, it's going to start off real fast, and I'll just go ahead and show you. There's a whole bunch of little buttons down here at the bottom, very easy to use. And there you see the, the coronal mass ejection. And then you'll see how fast things are moving through space. And this takes a photograph, I believe it's about every 12 minutes. Now, you can slow it down, you can make it go faster, and right here, the, the button that says step, all you have to do is click on it, and it will stop 
what they call the, the little movie theater for Soho. And if you keep on clicking on it, one, two, three, it basically takes it frame by frame. Now, something that I like to do, you could also reverse it by clicking in the little reverse box right here and hit step and it will take you in complete reverse. And sometimes when you wanna see something and things move so fast in space that if you watch this, even in slow motion, you might fall asleep, but it's a lot better to just keep on clicking and go frame by frame. Now, something that I almost didn't notice, and we'll just step back, meaning forward, was this large object, asteroid, meteor, and it came right past the sun, right past the area where this coronal mass ejection was. And you could barely see it, blink of an eye, it was there and it was gone. But what I like to do is I like to zoom in once you have stopped the, uh, the movie player. And you could zoom in as far as you can, as far as your computer will allow you to go. And then you could take a look at these objects just zipping through space and past the sun. Now, every now and then, you may notice an object that just doesn't look like it should be a natural object in space. And how I do it is I just keep stepping through frame after frame and if I actually end up noticing something I'll go back and I'll reverse it like for instance this small object down here so you'll just want to you know stop it zoom all the way in as far as your your computer will allow you and then just pan down and take a look at the object and that's the object that I was looking at and that obviously is probably some type of massive asteroid or meteor zipping through space but sometimes you're going to find an object that just doesn't look like it is a natural part of space. And as I was going through this earlier, what I'm referring to are UFOs. Um, there are a lot of them that show up from time to time, and they will look like your typical saucer-shaped UFOs. Some of them are very large. They're triangular. I mean, they're there, folks. I mean, the, the universe is, is so massive. Our galaxy is so massive, and there are so many galaxies. The odds of extraterrestrial life, it just has to be there. We're not the only living, breathing creatures in this galaxy or in this universe. But from time to time, you will see things flying by that you just can't explain. And if you're able to capture them and zoom in and look at them, you're going to see for yourself that these are not asteroids. They're not meteors. And I even had one guy try to debunk me and tell me they were ice crystals. Yes, that is correct. He said they were ice crystals that were in the perfect shape of a UFO. And again, ice crystals that close to the sun and twice the size of earth so that would make it an iceberg and wouldn't you think that it would melt being that close to the sun but anyways you know we'll go ahead and continue because i did think at one point as i was going through this that i did capture something that i really wasn't sure of it had a very large triangular shape to it and uh, again, I'm going to put a link to this, and if any of you want to start uh, researching more and more information about space and space weather, uh, I'll leave the link to BP Earthwatch. Um, he does a fantastic job. His website is absolutely awesome. It's basically everything that you need for space weather. He pretty much has all of the links. Now, what I was referring to, what I saw, was this little object right here. And I know this doesn't have anything to do with Planet X or earthquakes or anything that we're talking about. But if you're going to go ahead and you're going to use um, any of these sites, and again, you may find something or see something that is completely unexplainable. So here's the beginning of the CME. And here's a good, good close-up view and look at it. And then we have this object. There you go. Right there. It's completely triangular. 
There's something very small here in the back. And I have seen these types of objects many, many times around the sun. And they're, they're very triangular and they're very, very large. Because if you look at the size of this object, and this is the sun, the sun is behind this shield. So the sun is the size of this white circle. And this big, big red circle just basically blocks out the rays of the sun so you can get a better view from the camera. But there you go. And if you go step by step through a period of maybe two days at a time, you will probably see some things that you've never seen before, things that are completely unexplainable. So the point that I'm trying to make is there are so many things out there just in our solar system that we don't know about. And just because you can't see it, and just because you can't see it with a telescope, and even the biggest telescopes in the world, just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. And just because you can't put it into a mathematical equation, doesn't mean that it's not there. There are so many things zipping through our inner solar system each and every second. And we don't know about all of them. We don't even know about a fraction of what is going on in our solar system. So many times people say, if there was something in our solar system that should not be there, all of the astronomers around the world would know about it. Well, I'm not too sure about that because as of lately, well, basically this whole entire year, we've had so many near earth objects just come out of nowhere and fly by our planet, maybe giving us a few hours notice. And this near earth object situation has gotten completely out of hand. And if you don't believe me, you could go directly to the JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory's website. Just go to Google and type in near earth objects and go do your research. The list of these near earth objects is growing and growing and growing every single day. There are some days that there are two, three, or five near earth objects. And, uh, you know, and again, just the other day, we had a very large near earth object and, and they found it on a Saturday. And I think two or three days later, it was zipping by the earth. I may be wrong about the actual dates, but there you go. And you know, and NASA's excuse is, well, it came from the sun. The sun, you know, we couldn't see it. Okay, well, you're spending the taxpayers dollars millions of taxpayer dollars to see these objects. So what are we paying you for? You're obviously failing at what you're supposed to be doing. So instead of going and looking into deep space at planet nine, that is 20,000 years away, who cares? How about let's start paying attention to what's going on right here and right now. And while I'm asking, hey, can you guys stop lying and start disclosing more of this information on what is happening with our sun, what is happening with our earth? Because if you think people are just going to stand around and take your dumb answers to our questions, people are starting to wake up each and every day. Just take a look at your weather. Where I live... The temperatures should be in the mid 20s, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The other day I walked outside, it was 67 degrees Fahrenheit. 67. Folks, my grass is growing in the middle of January. Okay, I may need to go out there and cut it. 
So again, for people who tell you that there is nothing going on, there's nothing to worry about, okay, you know what? Just leave those people alone. Don't even waste your breath anymore. Just forget about them. You're not going to make them see anything until it is right upon them. And then they're going to start crying and begging for the information and for your help. And if you're a kind human being, then you'll help them. But this is just showing you that each and every day over this whole entire year of 2016 leading into 2017, we're under the gun every single day. That's what it seems like to me. Other people may have another perception. But with everything going on around us, the earthquakes, now the volcanic activity, what is happening to our sun, what is happening to our earth. So stay, stay, you know, stay tuned to all of this information. Stay tuned. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. If you do a little homework and do a little research, you'll start to understand and you will start to see with your own eyes that something in our solar system, something in our skies is not right. Thank you for watching the Nibiru channel. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is January 14th, 2017. Once again, the sun disturbance continues as we're watching a very, very large coronal hole turning towards Earth in the next several days. The reason why I report on these coronal holes is because they are very suspect when it comes to increasing the earthquake activity on the earth now to me and in my research and what i've been doing with my investigations is there seems to be something perturbing the sun something is interacting with our sun and it has been for some time now and we're going to go, go ahead and get straight into some of this information but before we do I want to go ahead and announce to any of our viewers and subscribers that we are now on Facebook. We've dedicated a whole entire page to Planet X and all of the current events and things that are happening with our Earth and the Sun. I will leave a link to the new Facebook page in the description box under this video. But let's get right into taking a look at this large coronal hole. Now, if you take a look at the very top of the Sun, all through this very, very dark region, and then curving downward, it almost is in the shape of a banana, this large coronal hole. Now, just the other day, the sun had a very large coronal mass ejection. And we're going to go ahead and show that to you because we have it. And it was quite amazing. Now, one space weather uh, website said that this CME, as they call it, coronal mass ejection, was almost a kill shot for the Earth. Meaning, at the time of that coronal mass ejection, if that would have been aligned with the Earth, that is what they reference to when they say that would have been a kill shot. So that would have probably been pretty close to the end of humanity. And we always seem to be in the right place at the right time during these large CMEs. But there you go. You can see that this, this coronal hole, and this is just another image of it, it will be turning towards Earth within a matter of days. And just a few weeks ago, we were going through this over and over and over again, these large coronal holes turning towards Earth. And everyone says, well, what does that have to do with us on Earth? What is the big deal? Well, past research has shown that these coronal holes, when they align with Earth, they create all kinds of problems on Earth, and they're directly now. Um, they're, well, basically, what I'm saying is when we have these coronal holes turning towards Earth, it increases 